Plays of women vandalized in Israel, hardline Jewish groups suspected. For more than two years, starting in 2019, the Lanka Project's 250-plus artists have been working on photographing and commemorating the last remaining survivors of the Big H, which, as I will refer to it, which is the really horrible thing that happened to the Jewish people in World War II. We all know what I'm talking about now when I say the Big H. Okay. The, the exhibition started in April 2021, and since then, images of Peggy Parnas, a Big H survivor, have been vandalized five times. Jim Hollander, curator of the Lanka Project, understands that the vandalism on Parnas's image is not anti-Semitism. Quote, this is anti-feminist, he declared. For many Israelis, the attacks convey a more profound pain by knowing that the perpetrators are from within. For the past 20 years, advertisements and other imagery with women on them have been repeatedly torn down or defaced by ultra-Orthodox extremists. Hassan Nahum said that the radicals are trying to erase women from the public space. She added, quote, this is not Kabul, this is Jerusalem. Yeah, these kind of attitudes exist even in Tel Aviv. There's like a Jew Jewish neighbor, ultra orthodox Jewish neighborhood in Tel Aviv, and uh, that I went to, and they do not like. When we went there, there was a woman with us, and they 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 are not happy with if a woman is not wearing. It's like it looks very very. I get the taste of Islam when I go there. It's like very aggressively anti-woman and actually we they they had some posters there and the person who was with us was translating the posters and one of the posters was blaming a recent accident that some people die car accident on women wearing not being decent uh, like that people died because women in our neighborhood are not following you know yeah so yeah this is like just a reminder that Judaism is a backward, anti-woman, barbaric, ancient religion, that the only reason why we don't attack it as much as others is because the number of people who follow it is less, and therefore less stuff happens uh, when it comes to... And it's less bad... likely to gain international attention because it yeah. affects such a global minority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people think we're we're not being fair because we don't attack Judaism as much. But what do you expect? Like, look at how many Christians are there, how many Hindus are there, and how many Muslims are there. Obviously, more stuff is going to happen in regards to those religions. Every time think, something were, yeah. I think Jews might be only around two percent of the global population. I thought it was one person. No, and also when you say Jews, you're talking about, that number is like not about their religion that's that's ethnically they're jewish mm -hmm. if you're talking about people who are jewish religiously jewish that's like even less that's like so much because most jews are secular mm -hmm. most ethnic jews are not actually religious jews so if you think about how low of a population ethnic jews are and then think about a small percentage of them are religious just think about how low of the population of the world is actually religiously jew so it would be weird. In fact, if we were equally attacking Judaism, I would suspect some ulterior motivations from our part. You Actually, I mean? you're if, right. Yeah. Like, imagine if we were covering attacking Judaism as much as Islam, Christianity, and Hinduism, then you guys in the live chat, you were like, what's happening? You guys seem to have been having, like, hmm, hmm. Like, I wouldn't blame you if you were thinking that we might be anti-Semitic. If you're we like, were something equally. smells off. Something is not right here. Yeah. Well, no, but I when thought it, this was want... something that's really interesting to consider because the anti-woman elements of Judaism like aren't as well known and aren't as talked about. And I thought this was a really interesting parallel, like the person says at the end of what I read, like this isn't Kabul, meaning when the Taliban takeover happened, we covered the story of shop owners were tearing down all displays of women or they would paint over all displays of women as soon as Kabul fell. 
because they were afraid of what the Taliban might do if they had these open displays of more kind of westernized women, some with their hair showing just out in public. So they're saying, this isn't Kabul, like this is Jerusalem, you know, like the, to a lot of people in Israel, like the contrast between these countries couldn't be more stark, but we still see similar attitudes. And when it comes to the erasure of women and the actual like erasure of women as individuals, right? So there was a famous case where there was an event, I can't remember what it was, but Angela Merkel was there. And they just photoshopped Angela Merkel out of the entire picture, like between these two senior male politicians. What? Because just have, <laughs> there's an ultra orthodox newspaper that did this because simply showing this woman, like, you can't have it. And it's, Wait. it's such a, and this is like a, one of the most important leaders in the world. I mean, I know that she just stepped down, but you know, for what, the last like 15 years? Anyways, and this is consistent. Like there will be ads for ultra orthodox communities for women's products that will not show any photographs of women because it's almost like the message I get from it is like that's how shameful it is. And I was talking to Rivka about like what do you think actually it inspires like the the total literal erasure of women? And she was saying, well, you know, it kind of goes back to just attitudes of gender segregation of like men and women should just always be segregated. You can't have the genders mingling together. And then there's like arguments of modesty and generalized women's modesty. And then you could go even further and saying like the establishment of extremely strict gender roles. We're seeing like the woman's fear is internal, like it's in the home, like she shouldn't even be seen publicly, like just to give you an idea of how extreme this is. And it's so hard for me to conceive of <laughs> someone who is a Jew themselves, extremely religious, defacing pictures of survivors of the big H. Like, it's so sick. Like, I don't even have words for it. Um, and just to show, like, how far this will go in twisting the minds of people. You're going to deface the face of a survivor of this event that your heritage, oftentimes the attitudes of these ultra-Orthodox communities, is to replace the six million, so to speak. Like, one of the survivors of what happened of to your your group is like this elderly woman is beautifully painted to celebrate her resilience and this is how you thank her it's so twisted you're muted i went and found uh oh yeah so israeli newspaper edits out angela merkel from front page of uh on paris march so she was supposed to be standing here like you see the, in the other pictures, she's standing right there. But in the picture in the newspaper, they edited her out. Like, look, she's not even wearing anything revealing. Look at this. Like she's not. You like, can't be more modest. Yeah, like she's wearing. She's she's fully covered. She's fully covered. But uh, this was the newspaper, and in the picture of the newspaper, they somehow removed <laughs> because she's a woman. Like this is a Jewish newspaper. Um, amazing. Unbelievable. Look, she was standing right here. They wow. just like put some random guy in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Andrew's um, a answering my question. As of 2010, there are 14 million Jews around the world representing 0.2% of the world's population. Wow. So I was way off with 2%. <laughs> oh yeah it's probably what i was thinking of um wait the, and those are and these again when he says jews he's talking about religious ones secular ones and even atheist ones so when it comes to only religious ones that's it's even much lower right yeah well i um, was googling for this statistic and it said something like for the jews that were polled it was 
people who identified as Jew above all else was around like 14 mm. million. Okay, okay. Um, by the way, the, when I went to Tel Aviv, when I went to the Jewish neighborhood, the, they're like people are not allowed to use the internet or what, like TV and stuff. And, you know, the phones, they don't, you know, women are not allowed to like use like text messages and stuff like that. Like only certain people have access to it. But even those people, they're not connected to the internet. So like that means like there's, if if they don't, if they would never put a picture of Merkel in their paper newspaper, that means like these people don't even have never seen Merkel. Like these people who follow the news don't even know what Merkel looks like. <laughs> they don't even know what she looks like because they were in no newspaper they would include her it's amazing um by the way i know that there are a lot of religious people uh, would have loved if merkel was not a good leader because the idea of women being able to lead like if she had failed it would have been so good for them because they want to always say like, look, this is woman cannot be in a position of leadership. Like we're not anti, like the, the, their understanding is that they're not anti woman. They're just not, they just understand nature. They're just like, they think like you're being, you're the one who's abusing women by putting them in positions that they're not fit to be in. You are giving them false hope about things that they don't have the skills for and giving them, telling them that they can do things that they can't do and putting them in positions where their nature makes them unhappy. There's like, we're actually for women because we know women are the happiest when they're doing their God-given duties, like and taking care of children and taking care of the household. We know that that's what makes them happier. So you're the one who's anti-woman by making them do things that is against their nature. So that's what you said. You wanna, you're trying to show something? You're muted. Oh, I just wanted to show what was actually defaced. So like here you see two examples, which are like these portraits of Peggy. And because they don't want you to see, I will show you a picture of Peggy. By the way, I actually has a very interesting life story. Um, but that's beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about right now. You know, just to honor her while there are these people who are trying to erase her from public life. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.